Alone in a cave, surrounded by weapons. That is a very poetic way to die. Oh, there he goes again. Give it a rest, Shakespeare. What is the measure of a man? Is it the fruit of his labors? Or the secrets of his heart? Is it the person he is? Or the hero he could become? Come in, Stark. Can you hear me? Ensign, we're in business. The suit works! Yes, these men were right to kidnap you. You could have built great weapons for them. We're getting out of here. You go ahead and clear the way. I'll keep in contact through this channel. Every journey starts with a single step, Stark. Ready? Okay, it's just a door. It should be easy to handle, right? Sit tight. I'll get us out of here. Please do. So, uh, I'm gonna level with you guys. It really upsets me whenever the Iron Man song is used in reference to the Marvel character. Because the themes of the Iron Man song and the themes of the Iron Man character are, uh... They're not compatible. The Iron Man song has no relation to what's going on here or Tony's character in any way. It's not cute or clever or funny. Please don't do this. Vincent, this is ridiculous. I should be dead. But not only am I alive, I'm stronger than I've ever been in my life. Unlike the 7th Gen versions, where we get points from completing certain objectives, we just get experience from killing enemies in this one. A single tap from our flamethrower will kill any of these foot soldiers. We don't need to hold it down at all. Just a uh, point and tap. There's not all that much reason to use melee. I mean, it's powerful, but usually our guns will do the trick no problem. This game isn't very difficult either. These guys have no business using my weapons. We got an optional objective to destroy the Stark Weapons crates, but unlike the 7th gen version where the optional objectives are used to increase the drama of the story and make you face some pretty difficult moral implications, in this one they're just there. They don't do anything special. So we're gonna leave those alone mostly. I can make a hell of a shockwave if I drop from here. Jensen, what's going on? They're coming. You have to leave now. No, that's ridiculous. I'm coming back. You will die. Jensen! The way Jensen dies here is really upsetting to me because his character is very important to the themes of both the movie and the 7th gen game. And the way he dies in the 7th gen game is also important. In this one, he just gets shot. It's really anticlimactic, there's no dramatic flair to it, it feels like it's from a comedy skit, honestly. The explosive barrels here are kind of useless, they take much longer to activate than if you just shot the guys with your flamethrower. I know I seem like I'm being kind of harsh here, but uh, even though this game is perfectly functional, it's not that great. Even though it is very, very hard to die in this game, inevitably we will need to take cover sometimes. Usually from enemies with heavier weapons like that rocket launcher. Now we could stand here for a couple of minutes and get hit with that rocket launcher, and we still wouldn't die. But we're gonna play along with the game for now. Unlike the 7th gen versions, this game is very linear, and the 7th gen version em uh, employs an open arena kind of approach to game design. Now, linearity isn't bad or anything, so I don't want you to think that's the reason this one is inferior. 
You might have seen a while ago there was a tutorial pop up that told us how to use a shockwave by landing on our enemies. That's not very useful. It is almost, almost always the better choice to stay as far away from your enemies as possible. There aren't that many mechanics to use in all truthfulness, so it would help if you actually needed to use all of them. Most every enemy in this game has a health bar, but they usually die within one or two hits anyway. It is still a little bit satisfying to see the health bar vanish. This game on the whole received better reviews than the 7th gen version of Iron Man, but this version is definitely undoubtedly more repetitious. Mostly the high points listed for this version of the game are that it was very easy to pick up and play, very difficult to lose. I'm not sure those are high points though. It makes me sick to see Stark crates in this place. Alright, so the last of the weapon crates are behind that giant gate and then we can get out of here. We don't really have to bother with any of these enemies, but I'm going to anyway. The best way and fastest way to break down the gate is of course to punch it. I look forward to seeing the big explosions that the Stark weapons will give off. Because in the PS3 version, you know, they weren't the biggest explosions ever, but they were pretty big explosions. And I know this is a PS2, but they can still do big explosions. I know, I've seen them. Alright, let's get ready. The explosions for these are going to be so big, you guys, you have no idea. It's going to make every other level ending look like shit. Oh, 